Hoy nuestra cita con el arte nos encuentra en Soho. Acompáñame después de la apertura a visitar Volta, una pequeña feria con una gran propuesta. ¿Ya te suscribiste a Cosmoarte? Vení conmigo. Estamos con Amanda Coulson, quien es la directora de la Feria Volta. And Amanda, first of all, thank you so much for receiving us. We know you are very, very busy on the opening day. My pleasure. And to start, we would like to ask you about which is the profile and character of the fair in, and what differentiates it from, uh, from other fairs in the context of many, many, yeah. many satellital fairs. Well, several things. One is that we try to work very hard with what we refer to as mother galleries, which are galleries that discover artists very young and really work to build their career. Very often a lot of these artists will be picked up and will show at a bigger fair later. In New York we have solo projects, so that really sets us apart because if there's 90 galleries here, there's 90 artists. That's very, very interesting. And so people yeah. can have the full scope of They can have the full scope of the artist practice. They don't have to be overwhelmed by how much work is on show. And which are the highlights of this year? What we should be looking for? Well, that's always a bit like asking me which is my favorite child. <laughs> I, I was, what's the next question? <laughs> so it's difficult. I think there's a lot of highlights. Um, this year we have a lot of performances happening uh, during the fair. We also have another thing that people say that it's, you know, it's emerging art, but that doesn't mean young. I've always been against that, oh, they're 22, they're amazing. What about someone who's matured and developed their career? So we actually have some very interesting artists here who are quite, you know, I don't want to say old, but they're getting on in their years. And they were somehow missed when they were young, but I think they're still emerging for us. So we have, for example, Willie Cole, who's a very important African-American artist who's showing upstairs. And we also have Siri Baird, who's 94 years old. Oh, wow. And I tell you, she's got more energy and more talent than a lot of 22-year-olds because she's had time to really digest all her experiences. Yes. So I think it's quite interesting for that. That's beautiful. Well, in this case, we will leave with the message that it's never too late to start, right? Never too late. Or, or too late to be uh, discovered. Exactly. That's wonderful. We will start visiting the fair. Thank you so much for your work. Hey, hi, so good to have you here. Oh, thank you but so look, much. I'm really glad you met Amanda. It was great to speak with her mm -hmm. and now we are ready to see the highlights of the fair. So Good, no, I like look to forward to this. Around? Yes, I have some in mind. Let's do it. Let's go. You can kind of see how Amanda does the curation, how the the booths kind of play off one another. The, these two, this one and then this one, they're both young artists. One's Polish, one's Armenian, but they have a lot of influence of um, early 20th century German new objectivity, which is like George Gross and those very like kind of like very political, like kind of anti-establishment in a way, which is neat. And also with these really wild uh, color palettes. So this is Wilmer Wilson IV with Connor Smith. He's been at this performance for over an hour. And all of his work is really durational performances and it utilizes his own skin in the works, in his body. I'm interested in kind of the history of um, the paper bag in America. Um, it has a very specific cultural history as being a tool of colorism. Um, amongst black Americans um, and colorism is kind of um, like a discrimination or like preferential treatment given to people of a certain like lighter skin color. Um, so the paper bag was historically like a denominator between um, privilege and not privilege.
this gallery is Tezukayama from Osaka and actually we are within the booth around the works of the artist Satoru Tamura who is this fine gentleman here nice but because you kind of see two of his series of I call them kind of like emotional machines or like emotive machines because it's it's a device it's made to do something and maybe on the surface it's not really doing anything it's just you know these you like mean. yeah yeah just like the moving around and this is the light bulb but when you watch them work you see this like this, this series is called point of contact so it's like the incandescent bulbs and when you know, I don't know how all this works but when the the pointers when they uh, like touch the metal the lights go on you know so it's, it's it point of contact you think of like person to person you know and it's such, again, it's like a very simple idea, but yeah. it's something we can really relate to. This is Bad at Sports. Bad at Sports is a mega awesome artist run podcast it's like artists talking to artists or artists talking to curators and it's like Chicago New York based so this installation which is part of one of the co-founder Amanda Browder's bedroom and that's one of her works back there all throughout the fair they will be doing their like podcast interviews in bed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah you got it that's it it's like bed in it's sort of like a really cheeky homage to the bedding. Right. We are among the works of Siri Berg. This is with Hiona's Gallery in New York. Siri is a Swedish artist who's lived in New York like decades, many, many decades. She's in her 90s. So the really interesting thing with this booth is they're showing it's almost like a mini retrospective of what Siri's been doing. That she has this like 50, 60 years of, of body of work that, like this work, for instance, is, um, is from the 70s. And then this color spectrum behind us is brand new. Guido Mouse of Beta Pictoris has this incredible program, I think, oh, there he is back there. And he's showing Willie Cole. And he has kind of, sort of a mini survey of Willie's work. Willie is, I want to say he's in his 50s. He has works that referenced here in major collections, like at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and MoMA, and also new works. He's super inventive printmaking with a steam iron. And then he'll use... Like a very diversified medium, yes, right? Yes, yes. It's the printmaking and the sculpture is really what he's most known for. But he uses these really like utilitarian objects, the women's shoes and the irons. Estamos con Michael Selehoski, que está aquí presentando con Ethan Coy. Te queríamos preguntar un poco que nos cuentes de qué se trata tu trabajo. ¿Cuál es la propuesta que estás presentando acá en, en Volta? Y bueno, estos objetos son objetos encontrados, algunos en las mismas calles de Nueva York. Um, estoy tratando de recordar estos uh, barricades, no sé cómo se dice en Las castellano. barricadas. Las barricadas, <risas> igual. Uh, son de uh, Prince Street, yo creo, después de, um, del Año Nuevo Chino. Estaba en la calle, yo los recogí, uh, afortunadamente la policía no me pilló y no, bueno, dicen no cruces, lo crucé, dependiendo de su punto de vista. Estos objetos, sillas, trozos de madera, son materiales humildes que uno de repente no, ni, ve, ni vería en la calle, pero yo en recogerlos y recontextualizarlos puedo darles, no sé, otro significado. significado. Like 
decided to ask you uh, who is the artist and what this uh, very interesting work you are presenting in the booth, what is about? Um, the artist's name is Hyungyeong Park and um, she's from South Korea but she was educated in Japan. She uh, uses very interesting technique that um, um, like it, that you cannot really like see like these days like what she does is she melts fabric on canvas with soldering iron and then um, she uh, creates an artwork and then she was inspired by Korean shamanism so you can find a lot of Korean shamanis like shamanistic elements Llegamos al final de nuestro capítulo de hoy. No olvides que podés ver los otros eventos de la Semana Armory y nos volvemos a ver el próximo jueves. Chau, chau.